Hello everyone, this is Personal Finance for Us. Today's video is going to be getting into the nuts and bolts of baby step number two, which is getting rolling with the debt snowball. We're going to get really into the details, go through uh, a general example of how it works. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. First, let's talk about why it works. Um, it's effective because it gives you an exact easy to follow plan. You don't have to come up with your plan. Just follow this plan. Just get into the car and drive it. Also, it focuses your money. So many times we try to we take the shotgun approach, right? We're like, oh, I'm going to put a little extra towards this bill and then put a little extra towards this bill and then try to save a little bit. But if you do too much of that, unless your income is way higher than your expenses, it's very hard to make any real leeway there with with this approach your money kind of gets more focused rather than spread around so you actually can get and feel that traction and we move up the debt ladder from smallest to largest because you get a little bit of a psychological boost right so you could start with your highest debt or your highest interest rate debt but what often ends up happening is that first debt will take so long it'll take so long for that first win to come it can get discouraging so for a lot of people hey yeah you get that big mental boost if you can knock out your first couple of debts in a couple of months you start to get that that self-belief like yeah yeah I can do this so here is our example person our example is going to be Cheryl Cheryl has 50 G's in debt. Her income is 30 G's after taxes or $2,500 a month. She's already done baby step number one. She's committed. She's ready to get this thing going. She's already saved her $1,000 starter emergency fund. Cheryl has been a little naughty with the credit cards. Um, she's using, been using them to cover entertainment costs, eating out, getting drinks with friends after work, going to the movies, basic stuff that kind of we all do. Uh, and she's decided to cut out all of these things in her budget in order to focus on getting rid of the debt. So here's our um, breakdown of Cheryl's expenses. On the left, we have her rotating. These aren't going anywhere expenses. And that's uh, her rent of $800 a month, electric and utilities for $1,000 a month, transportation, gas and insurance, $135 a month, groceries, $250 a month. Cable $100 a month, cell phone $80 a month for a total of $1,465. To the right, we have her debts, the total she owes plus the monthly payment. So for her, she has a Best Buy card that she owes $1,000 on at $25 a month, a Macy's card she owes $1,100 on at $35 a month, a rewards card she has $5,400 on at $50 a month, a car loan which is whopping for her income at $21,000 a month, uh, at, sorry, at $21,000 for $375 a month, and lastly, some sort of personal loan for $21,500 or $365 a month for a total of $50,000 or $850 a month. She's actually spending more on her total debts per month, just the minimum payments, than her actual rent. So Cheryl does the math, and she sees the difference between these two numbers is only $185 a month to start her, her debt snowball with. So she looks over some things. She decides to make some cuts. She researches a less expensive phone plan. She cuts cable because she says, hey, I got to get another job to bring in some more income anyway. I ain't going to be watching TV. So she signs up for one of the food delivery services and she works nights and weekends after her day job. She estimates that after taxes, she should be able to bring home an, an extra $600 per month. She also realizes that her gas, of course, will be going up because she's going to be driving around town delivering food. So she adjusts that cost into her new, uh, her new budget. So after that, we see rent still, of course, $800. Nothing changes except for our transportation costs. I think she bumped that up 30 bucks. Did cut a little bit from the groceries down from $250 to $200, and her cell phone bill is now only $45. So now her total uh, expenses are $1,310. Obviously, the debts haven't changed just yet. So if we do the math on that, we see that Cheryl's income with the second job is now 
$100 after taxes and her new expenses with the cuts are $2,160. This gives her $940 left after expenses. Big difference. Cheryl's now ready to begin the debt snowball. So as we said on the last slide, she has $940. She's going to put that money on top of the minimum payment she'd already be making. This is a total of $965 she has to put on that Best Buy card in month one. In month two, Cheryl will have $35 left on the Best Buy card. After that minimum payment, of course, she's going to have $10 left. So from that $940, She's going to pay that remaining $10 on the Best Buy card balance. First credit card in the second month is now done. Now she can roll what's left, which is going to be $930, into her Macy's card. And if you notice, from month one to month two, I've dropped everything down by the minimum payment. Now for simplicity state, uh, simplicity's sake, I obviously did not factor in interest, so this isn't going to be a perfect example, but really the goal here is just for you to have an idea. Now, in month number three, the Best Buy card is completely paid off. Cheryl will now add the $25 she was paying on the Best Buy card into the Macy's card. Okay, So again, it, that did make a total of $965. Now she's going to take that $965 plus the $35 minimum payment from the Macy's card. This is going to give her $1,000 to put on that Macy's card for month number three. Now she's going to keep doing this over and over again until month 10. Uh, if you work out the math, it's going to take her that long to get through all the credit cards. So this would bring us, Wreck of the Snowball, up to Cheryl's car. Now her car is almost as high as her annual income. This is a problem because cars lose value every year. So we're going to look at Cheryl's Snowball in two different directions. Um, generally the rule of thumb is going to be when you have car debt that is that high in, in comparison to your income, a lot of times people are going to say, ditch the car. So we're going to look at the difference of that with and without. Okay, so by month 10, Cheryl will have paid off all of her credit cards and she'll owe about $17,365 on her car. She has $1,425 to put towards the car after, and that's the total of all the minimum payments plus the income from her second job. But at this rate, it will take her monthly, or sorry, roughly 12 months to pay off the car if you work through the math. She's already 10 months into her snowball. Most people finish paying off their debts in 18 to 24 months. Cheryl is definitely going to finish outside of that. The psychological battle that this presents is you want to pay off that debt as quickly as possible. It's hard to maintain multiple jobs and maintain a high intensity and high desire to pay off this debt when you get too far past two years. On top of that, the longer it takes for you to fully fund that emergency fund, the more time there is for life to happen. And that's that's just what that's just how it goes, right? Like the things are going to happen, and that's why it's so important, as we kind of mentioned in the first video of this series. Life is going to happen, and so the longer we go without that cushion, the more time we give for something effectively to happen. So if Cheryl keeps the car, as we've already worked through, she now owes about $17,365 on the car. She owes $18,215 on a personal loan. Her debt snowball again is $1425. If we fast forward 12 months, she's still going to owe $13,835 on the personal loan. If we add to her snowball the cost of the car, she now has $1,790 for her snowball. Again, if we work through the math, she'll have that personal loan paid off in about 8 months. Her total time working through this snowball is going to be 30 months, which is 
again, not awful, but we could probably do a little bit better. So let's work through what happens if Cheryl sells the car. After baby step number one, Cheryl could have kept saving and just maintained her minimum payments just to keep all of her debts current. With the $940 a month from the second job, she could have saved for four months and had $3,760 to buy a cash car. Now, common scenario, let's just say Cheryl was what we call upside down $5,000, meaning that she owed $5,000 more than what the car was worth, but at least she was able to sell the car for its current market value at the time, just leaving her with $5,000 left to count for. So we work through her debts. We still have the Best Buy card and the Macy's card, of course, but now her car loan actually ends up being less than the amount of her rewards card. This changes things quite a bit for us, as we'll see. And of course, now she only owes $5,000 instead of $21,000 on the car. Again, huge difference. So if she sold the car, excuse me, by month four, Cheryl will have paid off the Macy's card. $60 from her $1,000 were gone to pay off the card. She now has $940 to roll into the car loan for a total of $1,315. In month number five, she will have a full $1,375 to put towards the car loan. Month five, her car loan is now only $2,560. Again, she'll have $1,375 to put on the car loan. This is going to break it down to $1,185. This means next month, month six, her car loan's already paid off. So already by month seven, she's down to just the rewards card and the personal in the personal loan. So let's fast forward. In that month number seven, she's going to have $1,425 to roll into her rewards credit card. At this rate, Cheryl will have paid off the credit card in month 10. Cheryl will pay off the personal loan in 11 months, and this makes for a total of 21 months compared to 30. So should she keep the car? Uh, this is always tricky, as most people, most unless you're in New York City, maybe certain areas of Chicago, most Americans need a car. Most of our towns are not very walkable. Public transportation um, is not so accessible in a vast, vast part of the United States. So this can trigger some debate. Uh, we all know that buying a car from a private party also has its own risks. It's great if you have a mechanic friend that can go with you to check out cars. It's even better if you have one that needs to sell a car. or um, And just hanging around car guys in general, they can give you, you know, they hang out with people that buy and sell cars and they can tell you who's rough on cars and who isn't. So it's definitely always good if you have a mechanic friend in your circle that you trust that, you know, isn't a shady mechanic definitely always a good place to start when looking for a cash car. You could also factor in the four months that it took her to save for the car in the first place, so it's really more like 25 months instead of 30 months, but still much closer to, to two years. Now, once again, our example did not factor in interest. The interest paid will drop dramatically with the sale of the car, so there is a little bit of money to note that we would save there. Including the second job, Cheryl now has $1,790 a month to put towards her emergency fund once all of her debt is paid. She's gone from a little over $100 to not terribly far away from $2,000 a month. This is huge. So she's now ready for baby step number three, which is a fully funded emergency fund. Now, we're not going to get too deep into baby step number three. That's going to get its own full video. But... This is just an important part to keep in mind, and this is an important discussion because this is why the debt snowball is worth doing. A lot of people might look at this and be like, oh my god, two years is a long time. 
it's not a long time in terms of your life cycle, right? Like, if you're 20-something, 30-something, even 40-something years old, you're still probably going to be in the workforce for 40, 30, or 20 years. So sacrificing two years in order to be in order to be able to save more in the course of 30 years that it's not that big of a deal if you think about it that way so Cheryl's debt-free living expenses are now $1,310 just her rent and gas normal expenses a three to six month emergency fund for her is going to be between 300 sorry $3,930 and $7,860 at this rate if she doesn't drop that second job, she can save this in three to five months. If Cheryl decides to quit her second job at this point, she'll still have $1,190 in cash flow every month. So let's talk about the sacrifice. In two to three years of debt cleanup and saving for emergencies buys you the rest of your life to build wealth. That two to three years buys you the rest of your working life to save and invest. So let's check this out. I went to uh, an interest rate, I'm sorry, not interest rate, a, uh, an investment calculator. And let's say Cheryl is a little bit older when she sees the light and is like, you know what, I'm going to get serious about paying off this debt. So let's say she is like, okay, I, I want to slow things down in about 10 years. All right. The stock market average rate of return over time is roughly 7 to 8%. Okay. So let's say Cheryl sees a return of 8% in her 10 years. Her contributing that $1,190 per month. Her end balance is going to be $214,347. Of that, she's only contributed $142,800. She's contributed $71,500 was interest. Sorry, not contributed. That's, that's pretty impressive. Let's say Cheryl has 20 years to save. Again, $1,190 a month at an 8% annual return over 20 years. Cheryl would have $677,000, of which she's contributed $285,000. But look what happens. The total interest gained, or the total gains, is $391,000. If Cheryl has 20 years to save, her investments have made way more than her contributions. That's big. Albert Einstein was quoted as saying that the most powerful force in the universe is compound interest. The more time you invest money, the, <clears throat> the more higher your returns are going to be. So let's say Cheryl had 30 years. Let's say Cheryl's 35. She's like, look, I want to hang it up at about 65. Let's see what happens. If Cheryl has 30 years to invest, 8%, return $1,190. She has an end balance of $1.6 million. $1.6 million, guys. How much did she contribute? She contributed $428,000. She gained her money, made money, $1.2 million. She put in $400,000. She put in less than half a million and gained $1.2 million, you guys. Let that marinate. We got one more for you, though. Let's say, let's say Cheryl was, saw the error of her ways. She graduated from college. She was 22, ran up some debt, and she begins to snowball about 20, 23, 24, and she's like, you know what, I'm 25, I'm going to get serious, I'm going to save some money, I got the next 40 years to work, let's see what happens. Alright, so you 25 year olds listening, get ready. Hold on to your butts. Cheryl, after 40 years, 8% return contributing $1,190. Her end balance is 
$1.8 milli. Listen, I done changed my life. You ain't got to say nothing. I am living for the Lord. I am living for the Lord. I am living for the Lord. Hallelujah. I feel him down in my spirit. You know, as I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. She's contributed a little over half a million, but her money made her $3.2 million, guys. This is time you just can't make up. And you, you, you can't make up time, right? Time is the one thing that is finite. And you can't get it back. Now, if you're older watching this, I don't I don't want you to feel like, oh, it's useless. Because it's not. Because even still, you would be in a much better position than if you hadn't started at all. But I just want to drive home the importance of, of time. And so you, you don't want to belabor paying off your debt. This debt is stealing your ability to build wealth. That's it for the video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it made sense. Next video, we're going to cut into the nuts and bolts of baby step number three. And in the meantime, guys, I hope you guys are staying safe out there. I hope you guys are really paying attention to your money. And for now... This has been Personal Finance for us. I'm out.